We're going to take a quick look at using uh, Java with HTML web pages in the form of applets and j-applets that can be embedded in a web page. That's one of the unique and powerful features of Java, sort of like Flash and SWF files. And here's just normal compiled Java, but we're using this method, get parameter, which we can use with applets and j-applets, okay? And using this method get parameter, we can get string values passed to the applet or j applet from the web page that loads it. And you might be saying, well, what's the advantage of that? The advantage of it is, is that we can put information that you know changes frequently, or if we were writing some you know type of server side include or doing PHP or active server pages or you know something where uh, you know it's it's a bit more dynamic. In other words, the server is dynamically writing pages sort of on the fly. Um, in a situation like that, then um, it can be really useful to be able to pass parameters from a dynamically created HTML page to a, a compiled Java uh, applet or J applet. And you know, this way you can change the parameters, but you don't have to recompile anything. Okay, so I mean, whenever I modify Java source, yes, I have to come up here and I have to click clean and build main project and, and recompile everything in NetBeans. But not so with parameters. So in this case, I'm going to get first last name uh, and age uh, in the form of parameters from the web page that this applet will be embedded in. And I'm just going to draw some strings and display it by overriding the paint method right here, right? That's the Java code. Well, let's take a look at the HTML document that will load this class when I build it. Okay, here's just a very simple web page with open and closing HTML tags, open and closing header tags, no title. I guess I could give it a title, whatever, but okay, test. Um, the only really important tags on this entire page are right here, the applet tags. Whenever you want to embed an applet or a j-applet in a web page, this is the syntax that you want to follow. There's an opening applet tag, there's a closing applet tag, okay? And in the open, uh, opening applet tag, um, you would list archive if it's compressed in a jar archive. And a lot of times when I create a project or a game or something in Java and I put it up online, I compress everything into a jar archive just makes it load quicker and it's compressed so it takes up less space. Um, if you do do that, then you need to include this you know, attribute or parameter inside the applet tag archive that points to the compressed jar archive. Code points to, in this case, the class, the very first .class or class file um, with the static main method or the init method or, you know, um, the, very, the class you're going to load first to, you know, get everything else happening or start the ball rolling or however you want to say it. Okay. And then you can set the width and the height uh, independently from you know using Java code. I mean, I can use this that set size in Java code, but you can also do that in HTML. And then these are the strings here in parameter format, and they will be passed to the applet that's embedded inside the web page, just using this you know HTML tag param parameter, and then name first, name last, name age. Well, I just have to make sure that the parameter names match what I'm looking for. In my applet, otherwise I would get a syntax error. Or I'd get you know actually a runtime error, but um, you know so in other words, these parameters being the ones that I'm looking for, then it has to match exactly in the HTML. Also, everything comes in as a string, just as if you were getting it from a line number reader, a scanner, a JTAX field, so forth. And because everything comes in as a string, when I get down to something like age, which ultimately I have to convert to an integer, then I have to parse it. And that's why I'm nesting get parameter here inside of integer percent because I have to convert that string to an integer. Okay, but you can kind of see that see how it works the basic HTML. And so if I run it, here's what it looks like. I'll go ahead and, and NetBeans. I can just right click and say View. I love the NetBeans integrated development environment. Hard to believe it's free sometimes, but um, and notice that you know first name is Charles, last name is Germany, age is 42. So it parsed it and. You know, that's that's our actual embedded applet in the web page there. Okay, and then I thought you might just want to see a few examples of other applets and compressed jar archives embedded in web pages. So some examples I had posted online. This is another one. This one implements packaging, um, and also um, a lot of these you have to sign. You have to use a tool called Jar Signer and sign them because they allow file access to save and load game files on the local system. And Java disables that by default unless you sign something with a certificate that you generate with the jar signer tool. But I'll save that for another tutorial, um, maybe just another quick tutorial. 
So that's what's going on here. I'm, when, whenever you sign something with the Jar Center tool, gives it a certificate, and then you know you have to confirm or click on OK, or it will not allow the J applet or, or the applet to run. And that's a good thing. That's a safety precaution because if you didn't trust me for some reason or another, if I, if I were writing malicious code, then you could always opt out and click cancel. Okay, but in this case, you know, it's just a simple game, very simple code, no, nothing malicious there, but as far as you know. No, I'm just kidding. Um, all right, so in this case, if you want to look and see how it's coded in the page, let me click on View Source here, and we'll go find the applet tag. Actually, let me do this. Don't we? Okay. And I'll just enlarge this so you can kind of see it and we'll highlight it. And so you can see here's you know here's my apple tag. And you can put all this on one line or whatever. I, I like to do it this way, line by line. I put each little parameter on a separate line. Whatever the method to your madness is, this is a method to my madness, but maybe not to yours. But again, notice the syntax. Archive, in this case, I'm recursing up a directory, so I'm moving up a directory from where the web page is. Then I'm going into Java and I'm loading pirate arena 2.0.jar. Okay, now here my class is actually uh, in this project I'm implementing packaging. Now there's a difference. Okay, notice in this project here everything was in the default package, so I'm not really using multiple packages. On the other hand, look at Pirate Arena, look at the structure of it. We have all these different packages here, and I just do that to kind of organize things. Um, you know, I like to, you know, game functions are in one package, just some helper classes, um, a class hierarchy. Uh, is you know characters are in another package and the interface classes are in this package you know J frames and things the applets whatever but because of that the syntax is a little bit different when I load it from the page so to get to the main class that will you know the first uh, J applet from which you launch the main J frames to start the game I have to go into the interface package so I'm loading this compressed jar here and then once that compressed jar is loaded, I'm going into the interface package and loading the splash class. Okay, and that's what you see actually loading up in this web page right here. And again, I'll show you what that looks like in the project. Again, see here's the interface, and here's splash Java, which compiles to splash that class. And NetBeans makes it real convenient. It compresses everything into a jar archive for you automatically. Um, you can also make jars from the command line and like, like I said I think I'll do another quick tutorial just on maybe creating jar files from a command prompt and you know signing jar files with jar signer things like that but um, just just so you understand that if you're going to allow file access in your projects that's disabled by default unless you explicitly sign your applet your J applet with the jar center tool give it a certificate and then the user still has a good amount of protection from you if you were a malicious code writer because they actually have to you know click on run they have to confirm and therefore they always have the ability to opt out and that's a safety feature built into Java so you know if I were to click cancel or if I were not to sign it with the jar center tool it just wouldn't work and if you were to look at the console you'd notice at runtime that you had a security violation or some you know, some uh, type of security violation there but anyway that's that's just an example of uh, another project and how the HTML would look all right then I'm just setting, you know, name as Pirate Arena, the width, the height, you know, horizontal, vertical spacing, the alignment, whatever. There's lots of other attributes that you can set there, but that can kind of gives you an idea of, of a project using multiple packages. Here is a project, uh, you know, in which case everything's in the default package. And again, I'll go find. My apple tag. Everything's compressed in a jar archive, but um, you know, as as far as the class, I, I don't have any packaging, so there's no forward slash, you know, uh, package forward slash type structure there. It's just the name of the class, and, and that's it. And here's the compressed jar archive that it's pulling it from. All right, so that just kind of gives you an idea. Uh, one more here. Let's see. Uh, a conspiracy here, and let's see. There we go. 
I'm just going to pull up the HTML while it's loading. The same thing, you know, this, this is a signed applet, so notice it's going to pop up. I'm going to have to confirm because I had to use the jar center tool. Otherwise, it just wouldn't work. If I click cancel, it wouldn't load. And that is by design, by default in Java, to keep people from writing, you know, evil, malicious applets or J applets. And of course, nothing's foolproof. You know, there's always, you make a better luck, you get a better lockpick. There's always ways of making malicious code, you know, bypass the safety features, but it is kind of nice that that's built into Java. And, you know, just be aware if you're creating projects and things that involve file access and, you know, they compile and there's no syntax errors, but then you go to run them and test them in a web page or on a server and you wonder, well, how come it's not working now? Then that run, those runtime errors can be because, uh, you know, of security violations. If you don't have the appropriate security and uh, permissions, and if, if you haven't signed those applets and J applets with the Jar Center tool, okay, I'll quit saying that. I guess I that five times. So. Um, anyway, I'm going to click on OK here. Let me go back to my source. Just trying to uh, make that point, I guess. Okay, and again, here I'm implementing packaging. Um, and in this case, I'll show you what it looks like in NetBeans. Let me go over here. Open up Conspiracy here. And again, you can see I've got multiple packages. In this case, I have this J applet here, conspiracy.java, inside the interface package. And so, again, the HTML code for that, interface forward slash conspiracy.class, the name, width, height, horizontal, vertical space, alignment, the jar archive, and each one of these examples, I put this in a different place. I, I guess I should be consistent. Um, I try to show you different ways of doing the same thing over and over. I, I hope that gives you the freedom to choose what you like best for you. I hope it, you know, I hope it doesn't make it confusing. I, I, I guess the downside of that is, may, you know, but just understand that, you know, this is the compressed archive, and then within that compressed archive, this is the class file that I'm loading. So several different ways of, of you know loading J applet and applet pages with your HTML and your HTML, the HTML, HTML5, whatever you're using, web pages. Um, and also, you know, the ability to take a string of text, a parameter in your HTML web page, and pass it to your applet or your J applet using the function get parameter. Alright? Two very useful features. And as I get time, we'll, maybe we'll, I'll do a quick one also on you know the jar signer tool and just some of the ar archive features um, you know available from the command prompt with the JDK. But NetBeans does it by default. Whenever you right click you know and you clean and build a project, it packs it all into a jar archive for you quite nicely.